what's up welcome back to my channel if you're wondering why i got sunglasses on talking to y'all like i got an attitude i do because didn't i tell you when my channel started to blow up i wasn't gonna know how to act did i lie did i lie i'm on here acting brand new so welcome mm -hmm. <laughs> so guys what's up welcome back to my channel if you are here for the video we are about to get into all the mess we're talking Phelan's video. Listen, what she revealed, what she didn't reveal, a lot of stuff people missed and they were just bored, but that video had so many Easter eggs, so many gold binds. We're gonna break it down. We're also gonna tie it into Latoya's response. We're gonna talk about what Jay's talking about. And we're also gonna catch up with Miss Peach Juice herself and Simon. Yes, this saga is not over. And if y'all are here, you are interested in it. So let's get into the mess. Oh, before I do, let me put on my rich chick ish blowing up on youtube glasses listen before i do listen i have been monetized so yes i can get these got a new pair of glasses however more importantly all jokes aside you guys if you are new to my channel welcome come look around there's some really good videos i did a really good expose on simon um i do tarot i do travel blogs and ah, da, 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 da. you can see that from my youtube but i will say like comment and subscribe if you don't want to subscribe i appreciate that you're probably going to subscribe by the end of this video i promise you but if you don't subscribe i appreciate you guys just being here but if you have been back a few times and you still don't want to subscribe hit the like button it helps me out with the algorithm it helps me do this seriously and take it full time. And honestly, it's just a really nice way to encourage and I really appreciate the energy. Um, in the meantime, you guys know the deal. When you do like, comment, subscribe, and it pitches me up, eventually I will be able to afford editing software so I can stop doing my fade outs like this or ducking down and then coming up, all right? So anyway, let's get into the mess because that's what y'all came from, all right? Here we go. Remember I said about liking and subscribing so we can get some editing software and here we go. Wow. <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Now you guys, I have to be honest. If you follow me on Twitter, I am Tisa Tells on Twitter. The link is in bio. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I actually live tweeted Phelan's interview. And I'll be honest with you. At first, I was sitting there unimpressed. Talking about, I want my money back. Just like, what is it giving, right? Because you know how it is. I'm extra, right? But then I went back and listened to it because I was like, wait a second. Fallon's a Taurus, and I know that Tauruses love those slow burn, nasty get backs where you find out 10 years from now that they've ruined your whole life like an Easter egg. So I went back and listened to it, and y'all, I found out so much from that interview, right? Let's get into it again. I literally had to change my mind. I was like, yo, actually, that was a good interview, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's take it from the top, right? Fallon said that Simon pushed her into getting into the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, I first have a side eye in her because she was like, you know, I'm a spiritual gangster. I'm a philanthropist. I'm this, yada, 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 the sat and the third. And Simon wanted me to do, she asked when I came to him, like, yo, they've been offering the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I came to him and Simon was like, oh, I think it'll be good for your personal growth. I think you should do it, ada, ada, ada. Now, I was like, how is that any spiritual growth? I was side I am failing, but I was like, all right, you know, let's move on, right? But then she said there's a reason why she was so upset is because she felt lied to by the Real Housewives. How did she feel lied to? Well, for a number of reasons. For one, you know, she said everything that she talked to, she felt like she was used because everything she said she didn't want to happen actually happened in the housewives now for you guys that don't know anything about reality tv reality tv is heavily produced what that means is they don't give you lines per se but they give you emotional prodding right so let's just say you're just like yo like <clears throat> tisa always got something to say you're, you're a producer that you're assigned to will sit there and work with you and show you footage of when I'm talking about you, when I'm dogging you out. They'll put stuff in your ear so that when they have a sit down between me and you at lunch, you're already ready to go because you've been hearing all the trash that I've been talking about you for the last 16, 11 years. That's what it means like. So a lot of times when you sit down and you tell, they even have a res resident psychiatrist uh, or therapist usually there to get the girls to confide in. So 
that said, and this is just a little thing what Phelan was talking about. They sit down and they're just like, yo, like what, what, what do you expect to get out of this? What don't you want to happen? And Phelan was like, probably like, I don't want any mess in my house. I want to protect my family, yada, 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 this, that, and the third. And they're like, girl, we got you. And then they send their pawns and their puppets in. In this case, of course, it's Latoya and Drew. In this case, it's Latoya only that was willing to do it because as y'all know latoya was only getting paid a thousand dollars an episode right i'm telling you all this because it, it sets the stage right if you're new to my channel i like to set the stage right so it sets the stage for why latoya was acting a fool because she was only getting a thousand dollars an episode and she needed to secure her spot say what you want about latoya she did not become this big on YouTube as an accident. She is a hustler. She d is forward thinking. She is an Aquarius. So you take it for what it is, right? Now, she said that the one thing she didn't want was her house disrespected. Remember how in that episode, LaToya came in on 10, disrespecting the dog mess out of her house? And everybody was watching like, yo, what is your problem? Her problem was, I think, producers, from what Phelan says, Whatever she said didn't want to happen is exactly what happened, but worse. And the way Latoya has this weird fixation with her, she came in on 10, disrespected her house, talked about her insecurity with being off an older man. We'll get to that later on. Well, I do think Phelan does have an insecurity about that, but she doesn't have to worry about that because because Portia has her AAR. And Portia is using Simon's AARP card at AMC and Low Cinema Lux. All right? So she doesn't have to worry about that anymore. But... She said that, you know, um, it, the, the breaking point was, is when LaToya said a racial slur, I'm not going to say it, but it did have a big, it, it was directly related, of course, to her Asian, um, heritage. And the sad part is when LaToya needs her butt kicked, right? We're going to get to the juice in a minute, but I just got to say this. The fact that Fallon's kids heard their mom being called racial slurs and Bravo's always talking about, oh, we're here, we're there, this and that. Even like what happened with Asian Americans and Real Housewives of Dallas, the fact that LaToya gets to stay on the show and they told Fallon that she wasn't a good look because she basically declassed the show. Now, this is funny considering Miss Peach Juice is on there. But, right, because Fallon said she expected to sign on, uh, but she said that she called a friend who told her on good authority that she, you know, Bravo thought she was a bad look. And she said she didn't hear this from the Bravo execs. I think that friend was Candy. Candy was pushing real hard for Fallon to be on the show. Uh, Candy had Fallon on Speak On It. Kenya too, but Kenya doesn't have ties to actual Bravo. Candy has inroads and ties to the execs. She also has inroads and ties to the producers. So Candy, I think, is the only person that could have gotten that information, right? Now, why did LaToya call her those racial edifacts? Why is LaToya so... LaToya is still harassing her on Instagram for a number of reasons, you guys. Let's connect this stuff, right? First of all, right? LaToya literally was kissing up to Kenya, but she was kissing up to Kenya in a very uh, erotic, sexual way. Flirting with Kenya, saying this girl crush, doing this stuff, teasing Kenya. Now I know Kenya was like, I had this crush on you, LaToya. I don't believe that for a second. That was just a storyline. But LaToya, it, and see, here's the thing. I don't wanna say Drew, Drew was right about LaToya having a Delilah Slayer because Drew is trash, right? However, 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 LaToya did seduce Portia at the party. And she did it because for whatever reason, she was like, listen, I already got Kenya in the bag. Let me see if I can get in Portia. Again, LaToya is very, very calculated, right? The girl's not stupid. She is an Aquarius, right? I do believe that LaToya is still attacking F uh, Fallon, not because they have anything personal, but because LaToya's a mean girl. She has a cruel streak. Plus, this literally endears her to Portia because how does she find out about the private jet? How does she find out about the marital problems? How does she find out about the divorce? It was a combination between the producers and it was a combination between Portia. So LaToya is playing that whole any means necessary because if she is on Real House of Atlanta, she can really, what does she want to do? Athletic wear, braiding salon. What else is she into? Um boyfriends that are handsome but broke you know she can start a dating service where do you want like you know do you want a boyfriend that's handsome but broke right not saying her current boyfriend's broke but you get what i'm saying right um okay so let's get into the whole interview y'all 
I know y'all were saying it was boring, but I'm gonna make it fun for y'all. But also, you guys have to know that this was a huge NDA, beautiful walk around. Like I said on my Twitter, um, Tisa tells, Latoya was dancing around this like it, like she was, I'm sorry, Latoya, Fallon, Fallon was, cause I know y'all gonna be in the comments, it's Fallon, girl, it's Fallon. Fallon was dancing around this like her name was Michael Jackson. Let me explain something about NDAs. NDAs usually say you cannot talk about things directly between these times. Now, when they say you can't talk about it, they don't mean you can never mention it, right? It's not a, a court seal, but it is saying that you cannot tell me. So, okay, so how can I explain this to you, right? Let's just say we're friends, right? The NDA will specifically say you cannot talk about anything that occurred during our friendship during these months. If you reference it, it cannot be your personal opinion. You cannot make personal attacks. It cannot be anything that could be used to demean, right? Now you can say factual things about that period. You can say, yes, I was married during this time. Yes, this occurred, but you cannot speak on your own behalf and give your opinion. And if you give your opinion, it cannot be in any way disparaging. This is how most NDAs are read. So let's get into this, right? First of all, with that NDA walk around, right? The first thing she up and Adam does, and of course this was heavily scripted, right? When I say heavily scripted, they had talked in detail. So Adam thought he found an ingenious way to get around the NDA, right? By Fallon not saying nothing, Adam giving his opinion, and then Fallon like sprinkling something on it. So it's like, what's not said? So, right? The first thing he asked her is like, yo, what about when you heard the Simon and Portia were together? And she said, you know, I remember that morning and I was drinking my coffee and my friend called. And I said to my friend, no, my husband wouldn't do that. No, we have our problems, but he would not do that. Let me tell you why this was a skilled, skilled thing. It let us know everything that she was thinking, right? My husband wouldn't do that. My husband's not a piece of crap. My husband's not this and that. But she never actually spoke to what her friend, what her feelings were, what her opinion was. If you think about what she said, and this is that beautiful NDA walk around, she talked about the fact that one of her friends called her and she was recalling her conversation with the friend and what she said to the friend, but she never actually gave her feelings. She just made a factual recollection of a conversation that she had with a friend and she was referencing what she responded to the friend. I know you might be like big deal at same same, but when it comes to NDA land and suing, that is a beautiful slice of NDA mastery, right? It's basically, I think it's present recollection or past recollection, um, whatever. Anyway, right? Um, she asked about Portia, right? Now, I do like the way Fallon did play it. Fallon played it classy. Because honestly, that was me. I don't even know if I would have done the interview. Because, like, I would have been outside with my bonnet and, like, taking my earrings off, right? I, but I wouldn't have gone to tell all. But we would have handled that, right? But, like, all jokes aside, Fallon, at first, when I was like, yo, why don't you really say what you feel about Portia. However, she's very, very good because Portia does have like what, six million Instagram followers. She has a lot of fans. Even when I talk about Portia, people be coming in my mentions trying to re, um, rip me apart, right? And she said, listen, right? She said, nobody has that power, which I agree. I said it from the beginning when I was like, yo, let's talk about Simon. Because Simon was in the marriage, she was in the marriage. She did say they both made mistakes. Okay, good. So you're doing really well with this PR prep, right? Because there is something about our misogynist society where every single time a woman gets blamed for something, even if it's not her fault. So the way she said, yeah, I had some fault. He had some fault. It is what it is, right? And I also like the fact that she took the power away from Portia. Because Portia, I think, in my opinion, allegedly, is the lighting in the fact that she stole someone's man. She really, really is. And she thinks she did something. And for Fallon to be like, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't her, it would have been somebody else. I think really stung Portia a little bit more, but at the very least it was taking her power back, right? Then she goes on to talk about one of her pet peeves that I'm sure the producers told Latoya. The fact that it's like, yo, you're a gold digger, right? Simon is allegedly 59, right? 
Um, by his account, he is 57. Simon looks like he has his AARP card. And if I've, I've seen pictures of young Simon, I mean, he was never GQ, right? But his better days are definitely behind him, right? So, and Phelan is what? Gorgeous 30 year old. You married a man almost double your age, right? She said she doesn't like shopping. She doesn't, uh, uh, you know, she, she thinks putting together outfits are a lot of work. Now, in this case, she was, hold on, we're going to get to the gossip in a second. She was laying it on really, really thick. Like, girl, shut up. You don't like shopping. You don't like looking pretty. You don't like nice things. Girl, shut up. Shut up, right? Like, it's kind of like, I get it. I get it. You're not materialistic. You don't look for it. But if it's around, it's nice to have, right? Which I think is most people, right? But, 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 you know, Fallon was doing the most saying, you know, I think that's what Simon liked about it. Again, NDA, she didn't say this is what Simon did. She said, I think that's what Simon liked about in our marriage, right? And she said that what Simon's love language was gifts, right? And hers was quality time and spending time with their kids, right? And so then, you know, she said she was a full-time stay-at-home mom. Nothing wrong with that. I actually wish there were more women that could be full-time stay-at-home moms. And I don't mean millionaires, allegedly, millionaires' wives or rich people's or even upper middle class. I wish a lot of people whose fathers worked at Wendy's, there was a livable wage that if you have kids, either the mother or the father, but one parent can actually stay home and give that kid the love and attention they need and the other person can work one job. So I, I admire stay-at-home moms and stay-at-home dads, whatever works for you, right? Um... But, you know, Adam was like, you know, what happened in the marriage? And she was like, you know, it's a lot of hard work, right? So she let you know that Simon already was um, an asshole, right? And here's the beautiful thing that she did. She didn't ever speak about the cheating. She didn't ever speak about the timeline. But he said, but she said, but things got really, really hard and things changed soon after we started filming the show. Now, why is this so important, right? Soon after filming the show. Because, and we're going to get to this about the cheating rumors, right? Because this lines up with so many other people's timeline that lines up with, um, uh, who is it? Uh, Portia and Simon seeing each other for way longer than what they said. This definitely, definitely lines up. But did you see how she put that out there while keeping her fingers clean and not violating that NDA? She said, I just feel like things started to change shortly after we started filming the show. And she let us fill in the blanks, right? And she said, you know what? I don't have the answers. I don't know when it happened. Another thing where she walked around the NDA because she didn't say they're lying. They've been messing around. But Simon and Portia have both put out a narrative that they were only together for a month. If she did that, she would be like, well, they said they were over only together for a month. And that's what I believe. Or she would have been like, nobody believes that mess. But what happened? She said, I don't know. I don't know when it happened. Right? But I know, and this is the way Fallon talked. I don't know. I don't know when it happened. Some things were good. Some things were bad. But I know shortly after filming, I know things started to change. When that happened, I was like, girl, stop it. I get it. I get it. You know, you could tell that she had been really coached. You could tell that she was a child actor, right? Maybe that's where Fallon's money come from. Because Simon said that Fallon is not hurting. Fallon is not hurting for money. And Quietus is kept, right? I know a lot about Simon's early life. And Quietus is kept. Every woman that Simon's been with has usually had more money than him at least in the early years, more money than them. And once he used them to get what he wanted, he jumped to somebody different. Now, I'm not saying he was using Fallon for money, but it makes sense with his MO because Simon doesn't date broke women, but he definitely dates women that either have more money or he can use to jump up to the next thing, right? So we get that. It started, she's saying she doesn't know when it started, but she knows things definitely started to change when they moved to, when they moved to, uh, I'm sorry, when they started filming. Now, why is this important? Because the next thing Adam says is, he just asked him straight up, did you ever cheat? And she said, <laughs> well, that's a lot. But no, I never cheated on my husband. I know, I was like, girl, come on with the answers, right? Um, she said that they went to a lot of couple sessions, right? 
And this is the beautiful thing about the NDA. We're about to talk about Jay and how he blew up Simon's spot. She, this is the beautiful thing about the NDA, right? She said she never cheated. But again, remember I said how she walked around that NDA? She said, but I do remember something. She wasn't referring to the marriage. She wasn't referring to Simon's behavior in the marriage. She didn't refer to what she cheated. But in this walk around, she gave us everything she needed. She said, again, but I remember when we were in the therapy session and I remember something he said to the therapist. The therapist asked him, have you ever cheated? Have you ever done this? How you ever done that? And he said, listen. And she said, and I remember him saying that. Simon doesn't get caught unless Simon wants to get caught. Now, the fact that Simon was thinking, speaking in third party, I was like, oh Lord, he's given narcissistic things, right? Um, I'm not saying he's a narcissist, I am, allegedly, but I am saying that he gives like narcissistic traits, definitely, right? And I think that's enhanced by his money from the outside looking in. But again, you walked around that goddamn NDA because you didn't say Simon was a cheater. You didn't say you thought he was a cheater. You didn't say anybody called him a cheater. You didn't say you have proof, right? So you're safe with the NDA. You didn't say he cheated on you during the marriage, but you did say that you remember something that Simon said and then you left it in no comment. I said, that was a Taurus mic drop. That was a goddamn Taurus mic drop. And I said, you know what, Fallon? All right. You know what? Let's hear it for that earth sign Taurus energy. It's that slow burn. It's that ether. What makes your soul burn? But listen, let's talk about the cheating rumors because I don't know if you guys missed it, but if you, I'll put the link in the bio, but it, in the bio, I'll put the link in the description box, but the shade room actually did a write up with Jay. Now, allegedly ever jay's the guy that simon is accusing of if i can of cheating on him of cheating family cheating on him with right now here's the thing simon did an exclusive uh interview not simon jaylen did an exclusive interview with the shave room right and he let a lot of things be known simon left phelan the morning of valentine's day to go down to miami and costa rica Follow me on this. There are pictures of Miss P. Willie, P. Valley, Peach Juice, right? Latoya's jump off being in Miami and then Costa Rica, right? He, she left, he left on Valentine's Day. And get this, Jay said that Simon told Phelan that he was gone after he left. So he got up and left on Valentine's Day. Didn't even tell Fallon. You want to hear something else? He left her and he was gone for two months. He left her with not just her three boys, but both of his boys that are both special needs. I believe they're all, Simon's son, both sons have autism, I believe. And Phelan's son, youngest, I believe has autism. Phelan, this is a part of Phelan delighting and being a mom because when she talked about new activities, she wasn't just talking about being like, at first, I did a little research. She wasn't talking about, oh, I made cookies and then we watched SpongeBob. No, because they are um, special needs, it's important for them to always get new stimulation because that helps them develop. It helps them grow. This is also why Fallon being a stay-at-home mom, she wasn't just sitting there eating bonbons and champagne, but even if she was, who cares? You're a stay-at-home mom. You had those kids do it. But she literally was putting in the work of being a special needs provider even better than with her own children and showing love, right? Now, here's the thing, right? So again, this is the type of man that Portia is bragging about being with. You left on Valentine's Day in the morning with no, in the morning for two months, you told her after you left that you were gone and you left her not only to take care of your three kids, your two kids, but her three kids as well. So she was being a single mom for two months to five boys, three of them, which had special needs. Fallon is a strong woman, and I really give it up to her for that. Don't get me wrong. If I was a stepmom, I would love my stepsons, if they were young, right? I would love them like mine. I mean, she's a strong woman. The fact that she was doing this all alone for two months and still kept quiet, right? During that time, she said that her and Simon were always talking on the phone because they were really, really trying to work out. When he left, 
it, Jay was saying he didn't make it seem right now now hold on there's one more layer there is one so I'm putting it up on the screen if I can but this is what Jalen says right for starters Simon Sam, Jalen says Simon was well aware of him and Phelan's friendship and shared a message between them to prove how comfortable Simon was with them being around them Jalen says he was also staying in their home and that he even had his own personal living quarters there as assistant to Fallon this is not news to Simon, he said. He has taken some random footage that Fallon has access to as well and has spent it into lies, J Jalen said of Simon's alleged receipts. Now, starting back from the beginning of their messy separation, Jalen claims Simon left Fallon on Valentine's Day morning to go to Miami and Costa Rica for two months and said he told Fallon after he left. Jalen asked if Fallon was left to care for Simon's two special needs children along with her own children, caring for a total of five boys by herself. Fallon's son is special needs too, so that's three special needs children. Jalen says the video Simon shared is of the side door of their home that was broken and that Fallon felt very, very scared and uncomfortable to actually be there. But Simon wouldn't fix it. Now, you know Simon wasn't going to fix it because Simon was putting that house up for sale because he bought it just for the filming. Keep an eye on that because I'm sure that Simon is going to be living in with Portia or he's going to have a condo in downtown Atlanta because there is one on the property right now. But keep an eye on that, right? Listen. He said, at the time, I was not only her best friend, but he, but also her assistant. I was there for a whole week, which Simon knew about. I even had my own quarters in the home, which is located on the first floor down the hall from the kitchen, Jalen tells us. I am very aware of all the cameras that cover the home, as I was present when the house was under construction. Y'all, Simon is so fraudulent. He's so fraudulent. And you know why he's following? Because it reminds me of this text, this, this thing. Simon and his money, however long people think it is, it doesn't matter at this point how much money he has because when people think you have money, they treat you differently, right? Now follow me on this, right? Simon says these lies and does these things and threatens people, right? Hold on, let me finish this. Jalen adds that he had his own code to the house that Simon issued him. Phelan is set to address the rumors, blah, 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 blah. As Simon and Phelan continue their divorce, which is not the drama really. Okay, so whatever. Y'all can read the article. There's nothing in there except for them talking about the lead up. Because this article is actually like a little old. I don't know how it flew under my radar. It's on the Shade Room website, links in bio, right? But, 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 you know what the issue is? It's not whether Simon actually is a billionaire or even a multimillionaire. It's the fact that a lot of people think he is. So when people think that there's money around, they will start kissing your butt. Y'all have seen it in real life. Don't tell me you haven't. And that's what's going on. Because of that, because I do believe that Simon has narcissistic traits, because I believe what Fallon posted on her story when she said, this is what you need to know about dealing with a narcissist, right? This is what you need to know about dealing with a narcissist. Um, Simon posted something the other day on um, Instagram where he was like, you know, you had me at hello. And then he put in parentheses, for those of you that do not know, that is a scene from Jerry Maguire. Simon, set up. Simon is so stupid. When I say stupid, it's like the fact of, I, don't, I guess he didn't grow up in America because he doesn't understand if there's anything an American will recognize, it's a damn pop culture reference, right? Simon is used to being around people that either play stupid because he has, they think he has all this money, right? Or he just actually thinks he's the smartest person in the room, but he talks to everybody like they're stupid. Who doesn't know you have me at your hello? Wasn't a reference to Jerry Maguire or some movie or some saying, but for those of you that don't know, it's like when Simon, po anyway, let me get off Simon, right? But what did we learn from that, right? What did we learn from that? These receipts that Simon posted. And I remember my last video, I was like, yo, if Simon really had some receipts, why are you showing us the camera from when you come in the side door? And, and, they, and Fallon has access to the footage, and so does Jalen. And they have security codes to get in. So if they were really trying to hide something, you really think somebody says, Sim really, Simon, where's the video of them creeping in each other's room since he lives on the first floor and he has his own quarters? Where's the video of them giving a little a tug, a little rug? Like, where is it? It doesn't exist. Simon literally, and he forgot to say, because I kept thinking, why is that timestamp uh, the 14th on Costa Rica, right? Why is that? Because he was trying to egg 
Fallon on. Now, y'all are like, oh, he's just doing that because he's torturing Fallon and blah, blah. Y'all, let's look at Simon's game because he is not above a con, a scam, allegedly, right? You sure that he wasn't doing that because he didn't want Fallon to lose her mind to react and then he could sue her and get a couple of dollars? I know. Now, listen, if Simon was a multimillionaire, you might be like, what would a multimillionaire be doing that? Because that's pennies. If. Simon was a multimillionaire. Y'all recognize the game when you see it. He was trying to antagonize him. He was so big to tell his lawyers, I'm gonna sue you for all your liquid assets and I'm gonna sue you for your, your valuables and your goods and your clothes. Why? Because he would have sold the bags. He would have sold the jewelry. He would have sold whatever, like got it in court judgment. If he could have sold that out and took it on liquid assets and put this. Y'all, you can say what you want about uh, Simon. Simon, to me, allegedly, hustler, scammer, come up. And he's not afraid to make a come up off of a woman, allegedly, right? Now, we can go, I'm about to get to the rest of the interview, but we just need to dive into this. Now, I was on, all, what is it? All True Tea? Yeah, if you guys are on Instagram, there's this blog, it's a, it's a, a tea page, right? And I believe it's All True Tea. What is the name of this thing? Yes, All True T on Instagram. I started following her when, um, during the Monique and Candace ceremony because I thought she was very, very fair and even about what happened with Monique and uh, Candace. And this is when everybody else was losing their mind saying, yeah, finish her, finish her, Monique. And I was like, Monique really is wrong. All True T I felt was really fair. Anyway, she has really good tea. You guys should follow her, right? She said, Latoya Forever started dogpiling. Latoya Forever said, whatever Fallon, lo, no last name, her name is Pinna Noun, said is a bold-faced lie. Please focus on your fourth baby daddy, respectfully, right? Fallon said, I never said your name, darling. Your lies are showing. Jalen popped up. They did a dog pile and said, you need to worry about why your husband is in Fallon's DMs. She was too classy to say, but I'm not. Y'all, LaToya and Adam are so messy, but let's get into this whole thing. How does Fal uh, LaToya know anything that's going on in Fallon's life? How does she know? How does she know what was said? Why? I'll tell you. How does she know? Allegedly, Peach 2 Williams. Why does she know? Because LaToya is trying to secure that spot. We already saw from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, they're trying to make the franchise into love and hip hop, but still keep the name, the brand, whatnot, right? We see that, right? They're trying to like literally get a 20 year old thing. This is what they're doing. It's such a great thing to put Bravo on the map. You notice they're not doing that to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or Real Housewives of OC or Real Housewives of New York. And they all have worse ratings than Atlanta. But, 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 but let me get back to the point, right? Because she's doing this because Portia's feeding her energy. Latoya is a mean girl. She, I think she always was a little jealous of Fallon, what she had, and she wants to make her pay. And this is the perfect opportunity for her to secure her spot, satisfy her mean girl thing, and get in on the Portia thing. Don't forget, now that Portia has Simon, the producers made it no mystery that Portia is the darling. And she can make or break whether you get cast or not. I do think that she was the reason why Fallon didn't cast because it didn't make sense when they said that she wasn't a good look. But you let a you let somebody call somebody her several racial slurs in her house and her kids heard and she reacted with a golf club. She's lucky she only got a golf club. But this is what I am saying. This is the type of person we are dealing with. This is Simon. Simon was supposed to be enjoying his birthday and he was arguing back and forth with Fallon on his birthday after Portia did all that stuff. Portia should be very worried. For one, right? I'm going to get back to the interview, but this needs to be said. I did a tarot reading on Portia and Simon, and it actually predicted that it's going to end in disaster. Simon is petty. He is vindictive. He is narcissistic. And I'm saying this allegedly from the way I see that he's reacted to Fallon, right? You're doing all this stuff because you like to destroy. You like to love bomb. You like to build them up into what they want. And then you like to destroy because your ego wants to, right? And when things fall apart with Portia, and it will probably after the baby is due. If y'all don't believe it's a baby, you guys are goddamn fools. Because honestly, you guys, all right? But, 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 um, yeah. 
it's going to blow up probably after the baby and Simon is going to destroy Portia and he's going to destroy it the way most manipulative narcissistic people do. Tell me all your secrets, my child. I love you regardless. What you do with Bolo, it doesn't matter. I love you regardless. And then when they're ready to throw you away, they throw everything you told them in your face. Speaking of which, a lot of y'all, so last thing I said, a lot, listen, a lot of y'all were like, you know what? Stop talking about Simon. He's going to put roots on you. God don't like ugly. A lot of people, uh, avatars, eggs were jumping into my thing telling me how I was going to get my payback. And y'all, I just want to know, think, I think my karma for talking about Simon has come back. I feel like Job's being tested. If you guys notice the state of my edges, this morning I woke up and this happened. My edge booster, my edge control was empty. Y'all, this is my payback for talking trash about Simon. My edge control is completely empty. I had to film and I don't want to walk to the closest um, beauty supply store because the new owners are, I feel like racist and they follow me around and I'm like, I'm not giving y'all a goddamn penny, but the other one that I can walk to is not in. Ugh. Anyway, so this is my payback. For all y'all all y'all haters in the comments that are always talking shit, saying, oh, you're going to get yours. Listen, I've gotten it. I've gotten it. Look at these edges. And you know what? And I'm still going to talk. So let's get to this, right? Let's get to the rest of the interview, right? Um, Listen, it's obvious Portia and Simon were talking longer. She said in January, February, that's when they started having problems shortly after filling Kate Chaston from Below Deck who can't stand Portia and says she is fake and phony said also that she everybody knew that she was on vacation with her boyfriend Simon in January and Portia was trying to keep it quiet and acting nervous but they knew this is why Fallon thought she was going to be axed back but she did not get axed back because Portia finally told producers that she was dating Simon and they were going to get rid of Portia. I mean, sorry, get rid of Fallon and literally make Portia and Simon and her get her own spinoff. I don't know, this, that, and the third. By the way, did you notice that Miss Social Justice Snatch did not wish Brianna Teller a happy birthday, but she was sitting there living it up at Tamika Mowry's. Tamika Mowry, that's the girl from Sister Sister. But anyway, the social activist Tamika Mowry's or whatever, her birthday party looking... Like she was carrying um, some uh, uh, a baby peach. All right. So how long have they been together? She said that they were together for five years. They took a nine month break. The nine month break came three months before Simon asked her to marry her. She got married two times. So Simon does do this impulsive stuff. I wonder what that nine month break was about. I'm sure it's because Simon was acting a fool. If the one thing we know about Simon, he loved to leave one. He literally leaves one wife after he's impregnated another. Fallon in that aspect should be very, very lucky that for whatever reason, they did not have a child. Portia, I do think is within child and she's, uh, she's bound to him, right? But they said that they picked right up. They had a night, five years, four years and three months. I'm sorry, uh, three years and uh, it doesn't matter. You know I suck at math, right? They're together for five years. They had a nine month break during that time. And, at, and um, then they got back together and three months later, they picked right up. He proposed and they got married three months later. She said about the prenup because she was really, I guess Simon got in her head about you want to be one of those girls that want money because she said that she hadn't even, when she found out that Simon was filing for divorce, she had to actually look for the prenup because she only signed the prenup, right? Um, because it made Simon feel more uncomfortable. She didn't even know what was in the prenup. Now listen, I like Fallon. I think she's a good person. I believe a lot of stuff she's saying. Girl, shut up. You cannot tell me that a Taurus did not read something about money. Girl, shut up. This is my whole thing with uh, the interview. It had a syrupy, sweet, inspirational nature. And I love that, right? But it was almost to the point of, girl, shut up. Shut up. Like, stop telling you, you hate nice things. You hate shopping. We've seen your, like, shut up. So, okay, fine, Fallon. You don't like maybe a designer bag, but you're living in a $5 million house. Like, girl, shut up. You don't, like, stop with this Pollyanna shit. You don't have to lay it on so thick, right? But she did say that during those marriages, she fought and fought and fought. They went to therapy, um, separate and together. She was in the meditation. Simon was trying to uh, calm his mind. But again, like I was saying, Simon's first wife, 
supported him allegedly why he got his cpa license right then he fell into his next wife and got her pregnant the first wife he divorced had a baby with the second wife she became the second miss simon right then he had an outside baby with a colombian girl allegedly um they didn't break up but they broke up when fallon met him so he jumped from person to person to person in that aspect it's like okay fallon the way you got him is the way you lost him but that said that said that said i don't think any of them were friends so that was just an extra level of a slap in the face right she said it was a bump they had a lot of plans she had a lot of plans for family right it was a bumpy ride. She did the best she could to make Simon happy, the kids happy, and herself happy. I do believe that Fallon is telling the truth about that, right? Um, uh, she said, like, Adam did a real weird thing in the interview. And I want y'all to let me know in the comments. You guys, like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching this. Go on. If you like this video, all the videos are going to be good. But Adam did this interesting thing in the comments where he was like, Oh, every time you're serious, right? You raise an eyebrow and that's how I know you're serious. And I was like, that's a weird comment because first of all, the camera's not close enough for us to see it. Second of all, if you're interviewing someone, everybody has a tell. If you're very perceptive, you can pick up on Why would you let her know that you see her tell and then she starts hiding it from you? Like as an interviewer, I would think, but whatever, maybe he did that for dramatic effect and they add, um, edited it out. I don't know, right? She said, oh, and also just to let you know, in January, they were in um, couples uh, uh, counseling, right? She called, he wasn't in the house. She called, um, he wasn't living in the house because they were going through this. He, she called and they talked to him the night before. He always answers his phone. They had a really good talk. And then the next morning she got served with papers and Simon was like, oh, let me call my dogs. I don't know why they did that. Simon, shut up. You knew because if anybody's actually had to serve farms, you know when they are going to be serviced because they need to be served, I believe, within 10 days of the court authorizing them for service. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's 30 days and 10 days to reply. The whole point is, you know, and your lawyer keeps it up and you have to pay someone for proper process of service. And most service processors guarantee it'll be delivered within 72 hours if that person's not ducking them. Do you see what I'm saying? So, Simon was a liar. Um, she said she called her attorney. That's when the attorney was like, go ahead and talk. She said she didn't know what the prenup said. Girl, shut up, you are a tourist. And you got your own money. You knew what that damn prenup said. But again, let's go with her Pollyanna act, right? Doesn't mean she's wrong, right? She said after that, Simon pulled it back. They went on vacation. They did this. They did that. Everything fell apart again. Valentine's Day when he went to Miami and then Costa Rica. And there is evidence that Portia went to Miami and Costa Rica too, right? Now, what is the messed up thing about this, right? We're almost done with this. What is the messed up thing? It's the fact that apparently, from what she says, the toughest thing is the fact that her family's not united. She went from basically being a mom to these boys, truly, because Simon was off gallivanting, allegedly, with Peach Stew's Pea Valley, right? And um, left the kids with her. So she, you, you were literally out there falling in love and everything else and left the kids. And just that quickly when he filed for divorce, he cast her out of heaven and she's not allowed to talk to the kids anymore. Y'all, this is so messed up. It's so messed up. Now she did end it on a classy note, right? That said, listen, if my husband's happy, I'm happy for him too. Again, it was classy, but she's walking around the NDA because she's not speaking bad of him. But by speaking so highly, it leads us to be like, he ain't anything, he ain't ish, right? Um, she did make an interesting note that said she's done with rich guys, which leads me to believe that this abuse, this relationship was a bit abusive because can we stop the narrative that all guys with money are abusive and treat you bad. And if you get a guy with money, he's going to make you crawl. Y'all, I'm here to tell you it's not true. 90% of the time it's not true. Now hear me out. There are abusive people with money, but there's abusive people that work at McDonald's and abusive people that work at IHOP. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? So I don't like the fact that Fallon is pushing this narrative because like, listen, as women, no matter what your colors, we have to put it out our minds that they're like, that if you reach for more or aspire for more, you get somebody that you're going to be treated like crap because that's not the case. But she said she's done with rich guys, right? 
Um, she said she's done with older guys. She's gone with wealthy guys. Now, when we talk about the wealthy, y'all, we need to talk about, um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's been on the internet that Fallon actually has an LLC that she, I believe, established October 10th. Simon is the registered agent. However, I'm sure that was done. And first of all, I don't know if any assets were transferred. You can find that out if it's publicly traded company. It Well, that's not true, right? But I don't know if any assets were transferred, but it is along that line of when she thought she was going to be real housewives, you try to make yourself a business. This is also in the line to protect your assets because when you have, it's called piercing the corporate veil, right? But when you have anything corporate, anything LLC, if something happens when people sue you, they can only sue the assets of the LLC. Your private stuff stays off limits. That's why if you ever get anything, you always want us to have a step back, right? But it was October 20th, right? Uh, I'm sorry, October 2020 that she did it. It's in line. And I would guess that Simon is the one that set it up and Fallon just signed off on it because Simon is still the registered agent. And there have been no papers submitted for uh, diss dissolution. So, yeah, this seems like it's one of Skyman's schemes that he maybe got her involved with because, you know, he's a businessman and he wouldn't know how to do business, allegedly, right? Um, she said, I'm older, wealthy. She wants someone that respects me, somebody that loves her just as hard as she does, y'all. It sounds like she is going, she went through it. And honestly, it sounds like Portia actually did her a favor in the most you know what they say, anytime you dig a grave for somebody, you're actually making, you know, dig one for yourself, right? And she just wants to be positive because her children um, depend on it. And then it got, so this is toward the end. This is actually the end. Then it got super, super, super surfy sweet where, you know, she's like, I thought I was in control. God, no, I'm sorry. You know, I thought I was in control, but God's in control. And it's a bumpy ride. And then it's all this upbeat, inspirational music playing. I was like, can y'all stop with the Pollyanna? But you know what? Fallon's doing skincare. Fallon Pinna is doing skincare for men and women. She has a lot of cool things coming up. She's going to keep being a philanthropist. And she looks like, listen, regardless of what happens, she is going to live her life and she's going to do what she wants. So good for her. I'm glad that Simon didn't destroy her. I'm glad that this Porsche mess doesn't have her down. I know that she is hurt by it, but it looks like she is going to be okay. Um, and it looks like she is going to strive and survive and do whatever. Simon, still piece of crap. Porsche, dead wrong but you know what we don't even everybody is sitting there talking about Portia y'all watch the tarot reading I did on her if you like it or watch the thing let me tell y'all something Portia's going to get hers and it is not going to be pretty it's already started if you look at her Instagram pictures if you look at the way she's been looking if you look at her fake smiles yeah she's already getting her just desserts but you know what you get what you want you get what you want anyway you guys that's it that's my recap of it i thought it was a really good interview i thought she gave us a lot i thought it really connected all the dots it was a really good interview um is there anything else that i'm forgetting from it hold on y'all while i'm looking for it to see if there's anything i forgot make sure y'all like comment and subscribe y'all saw i got my little hoodoo payback from whatever roots um, uh, uh, is being put on me because my edge control's out and I never run out of edge control. I have to use got to be on my edges and it broke my little heart. My soul just cried. My soul just cried with the got to be. Um, in any case, um, what else are we doing? In any case, we also have, um, there was something else I want to talk to you about before I went. Anyway, y'all know the rest of the mess that happened. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have any opinions on this. I know everybody's like, move on from Simon and them, but the struggle just keeps going. And no, you know what? I wanted to give Fallon her due because I'll be honest with y'all. I spent time talking about Fallon. I'm not sorry, not Fallon, Portia. I spent time talking about Simon. And y'all, why now when the woman that was actually humiliated in play has something to say, I'm going to give her due. So there you go. This episode was literally dedicated to the illustrious Fallon Pinna. Girl, keep thriving and subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.